Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris here. So today, we're going to put some of what we've learned together, and we're just going to go ahead and update this repo. So as you can see, we have the uh, main kind of eight commits ahead of the fork. So all we want to do is bring our fork up to speed, and that's going to entail you know, dealing with some uh, potential merge conflicts. Uh, we're going to create a PR. We're going to push the PR to our repo, and then we're going to merge it into our main. So uh, I'm excited to get started. Let's just get right into it. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to clone the remote fork into our uh, terminal, so into our local environment. So let's do that now. So we'll do that with the command git clone, uh, git at github.com, colon chris dash alexia slash alpacalora.git. Okay, so once we've cloned it, we're good to cd into it. And once we're in there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a remote. And that remote is going to be the main. So we're going to go ahead and grab this here, the SSH address for the original repo. We're going to head back to terminal. We're going to go ahead and use the command git remote add upstream and then the SSH address of the remote we want. Now, remember that this upstream is just a name, so it doesn't have any special powers or anything like that, but we do want to make sure that we add it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We can use the command git remote dash V. This is going to tell us that we have this upstream remote, which is the original repository, as well as we have this origin remote, which is the fork. So now that we have that remote, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this command git switch dash C sync from upstream. So this is gonna create a new branch and switch us to it. And that branch is gonna be called sync from upstream. Now that we're in the new branch, we're gonna go ahead and pull those changes from the remote. Okay, so now that we have the goal and the goal is to update our fork from the original repository, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to use the command git pull dash dash no rebase upstream main. So what this is going to do is it's going to do a pull. And if you remember from previous videos, a pull is just a fetch and a merge. It's not going to rebase. So it's just going to perform a merge. And we want to pull from our upstream since that's a remote that's associated with the original repo. And we want to get the main branch from that remote. We can go ahead and run this command now. And you can see that we have a merge conflict. Automatic merge has failed. Please fix conflicts and then commit the result. Well, as we can see, we have this merge conflict in generate.py. Let's check our git status and see what's up. So as you can see, generate has had changes both from my fork as well as the original repo. So let's take a peek at what those changes might be. So we're going to go ahead and use nano. Nano is going to let us look into the file and see what's conflicting. So let's do that now. And as you can see, it looks like they're getting rid of a number of these asserts. So if you remember from our merge video, you'll remember that this head to this line indicates this is what's currently present on our head. So that's the tip of our commit history. And everything between this line and this hash is what is the incoming. So as you can see, basically this reads as, hey, you have this assert block here, but the update to the repo does not have it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and get rid of all of the information here. Since there's nothing between the uh, incoming symbols, that means that it's just meant to be empty. So that's great. We can go ahead and we can keep on rocking down here. Now you can see we have this separate instance of a conflict. On our fork, we have this launch server name equals 0000. And on the original repo now, they have launch share equals share gradio. So I'm actually going to choose to keep our changes here. That's because when we run this in Docker, if we don't specify our host as being 0.0.0.0, we won't be able to access the Gradio application outside of the Docker container cleanly. So what we want to do is we, and we also don't have any interest in creating this as a shared Gradio app. So 
uh, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to remove everything between the middle line and the incoming hash. And we're also going to remove this head flag. We'll go ahead and look for more commits. And so it looks like that's it. Now, one thing you might notice is that it was kind of tedious to find all those and look at all those. So is there an easier way that we could have done this? The answer is definitely yes. There are a number of tools that we can use that are more visual that we can uh, use to make our workflow a little bit more simplified. If you don't want to look through a bunch of files, look for the diffs and then you know choose what to keep or what to, to get rid of. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, control X and I'm gonna press no. So we're not going to save that file. And I'm gonna show you guys how this process might look if we used VS Code. Okay, so immediately in VS Code, there's a few things you wanna take a peek at. I'm not gonna go super in depth into exactly what we're looking at here because I am going to at some point go through VS Code as a tool, but I did just wanna show you that if you're already using VS Code, uh, there's some pretty straightforward ways that you can handle merge conflicts. So. First things first, you'll notice that we're on the branch sync from upstream. That's great. That's the branch we want to be working in. You'll also notice that there's a number of different files on the file explorer that have different colors. This yellow indicates that there's a modified file. This red means that there's some kind of conflict. And as you can see, when we hover it, we can see that it says conflict both modified. So let's go ahead and click on generate.py and see what we can do. So as you can see, we have this very kind of awesome notation here, which really simplifies for us the process of resolving these uh, merge conflicts. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to look at a couple different ways that we can inter interact with this. Number one, since we want to, in this case, accept the incoming change, we can just click this accept incoming change button. And you'll notice that it does the rest for us. So it selects and gets rid of all of the merge flags so for the conflicts. Uh, and it's, it really is that easy. So if you look on the right-hand side kind of mini map of the code here, we can go ahead and highlight this uh, section with the darkened red line. And that's going to be an additional conflict. If you look in the scroll bar itself, you can also tell where the merge conflict is because it's highlighted in that traditional green and blue. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now, in this case, we wanted to keep what we had, so we can just go ahead and we can accept current change. And that's it. We could go ahead and save this file, and that would really be all. We're gonna take a peek at one more method for resolving merge conflicts, again, using VS Code, and then we will move on to resolve this merge and create a PR. So the last way is there's this resolve and merge editor button that we can press. So let's go ahead and press that button. Okay, so now that we've entered the merge editor, you can see that this is a little bit more overwhelming, but it's giving us a ton of information. It's also very straightforward to use. I've zoomed out my VS Code a little bit so that we can see everything all at once, uh, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. So first things first, on the top right-hand side of the screen, we have the ability to go to the previous or next unhandled conflict. Very exciting. This window is gonna show us what it looks like in the incoming branch. And this is gonna show us what it looks like in the current branch. So this is a very handy way to determine what you want to keep. Now you'll notice that we have the ability to accept incoming, accept combination, or ignore, depending on what we need. We also have the ability to accept all changes from the left, if in case we knew that we just wanted to keep all of our changes. For now though, we're gonna go ahead and look at the uh, option to accept incoming here. So we click that. You'll notice now that this bottom mini map has incoming highlighted for us. And that's indicating that we've accepted the incoming changes. We don't have to, you know, just do that. You can continue to, to work with this editor, but for now that's perfect for us. You'll also notice that we have this handy button, which is going to go ahead and let us, when we click on it, zoom to our last conflict. So as you can see, 
we have this launch share share radio or this launch server name. In this case, we want to accept what's currently there since it works best with what we're doing. So we're going to hit accept current. And now we have the full file. This is an incredibly powerful tool for when you have more complex or dense conflicts. I am still a fan if you don't have a lot of conflicts of going with the kind of in, uh, you know, the command line option, which is just kind of use whatever text editor you want and whatever macros you want and look at the changes and, and make them there. Uh, but when you get kind of in the weeds, it is definitely nice to be able to just come into VS Code and kind of visually sort through those merge conflicts. Uh, never, so I'm a big fan of using the CLI as my uh, primary way to interface with Git, but never feel bad for using very powerful, very excellent uh, graphic graphical tools. Um, I got a, a comment on LinkedIn about you know, should I stick with CLI? You know, is using a graphical tool appropriate? The answer is definitely. Uh, you should definitely use graphical tools if they're going to help you get your work done faster. But it's always nice to know the command line uh, interface commands because that just lets you be more flexible. It means you don't have to have the graphical interface and you can still effectively do your job. So it is important to know it in my impression, but it isn't like the only way to do it. And if you don't like it or you prefer the graphical tool, hey, you know, what? whatever tool gets the job done for you, that's the tool you should use for sure. So now that we've resolved all these conflicts, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit complete merge. We are indeed going to commit this so we can do that now. We also have this ability in VS Code to publish this branch, but we're going to head back to the terminal for now. Okay, so now that we're back in the terminal, we want to go ahead and use the git push command to push the changes that we've made on this branch to GitHub so we can begin and then complete the PR. You'll notice that we have to use that dash dash set upstream origin sync from upstream parameter. This is because we need to tell GitHub to create this for us. Right now, this branch doesn't exist, and so we must ask it to. And that's what this set upstream is going to do for us. Let's go ahead and run this command. Okay, so again, as we've run this, it GitHub's very smart. It knows what we're trying to do. We have this link where we can already make the PR. We're just gonna go ahead and click on that. So the first thing you'll notice is that this is trying to uh, sync to the original repository. We don't want to do that at this moment. We're still trying to get all these changes uh, ready to rock, nice and tested, and then we'll go ahead and do that. So for now, we're going to click on this drop down, and we're gonna select our fork. This is gonna change the syntax a little bit, and that's fine. We're gonna leave a helpful message to ensure that uh, we're, we're doing our proper record keeping. So we're just gonna leave a helpful message that lets people know what's going on. We're gonna create that pull request. And now we are going to go ahead and get ready to merge. We have already checked and made sure that there's no conflicts. We sorted that out ourselves. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and merge this pull request. And that's it, that's really it. So basically what we did today was we just, you know, we, we, we made everything up to date. You can see here now that we are up to date with the main repository. Uh, we, in order to do that, we had to clone the repo. Then we had to make a new branch. We had to add a remote. We had to pull from that remote. We had to solve some conflicts. We saw a few ways to do that. And then we were able to create a PR and merge it. And that's really it. That's what it comes down to. And it's really that easy to get, you know, contributing. So once this is in a format that uh, I feel comfortable with, I will make a PR to the original repo and hopefully we can get some of these changes merged in there. Uh, but for now, uh, my name is Chris again. Nice seeing you and we'll see you in the next one.